Random Canon, the Game Review Podcast where Cole plays canon, and where we can dance if we want to, we can leave your friends behind. And your friends don't mm-hmm. friends, and if we don't, don't dance, dance you know, no. no friends of mine. Okay, don't sue. But <laughs> this is episode 54, Dance Dance Revolution, where we'll discuss the dance-tastic awesomeness that is dancing games. Woo-hoo. This is Tiffany. And this is Mia. Well, let's go straight into the talk from Teen Tandem. So, Mia, what have you been up to for game or homework? Nothing much, just the usual. I got through the second storyline on Cinderella Phenomenon, and I'm in all in my feelings because these guys are so well written, and the stories are great, and the character design is great, and I'm about to start my third. I got into some Sims 3 nonsense because I installed um, some grown mods. And mm-hmm. the Sims on the island are breeding like rabbits. And it's <laughs> gotten a little out of control. There's a lot of drama going on, a lot of chaos. And it's just so much fun. Yeah, I have to give it up to the modding community because they just did the damn thing. I haven't gotten too far on Hogwarts Mystery because I've been so consumed with other things. Yes. And trying to get caught up. But hopefully after, you know, the play's over, I have more free time. I want to get back into doing more console stuff Mm. and playing Overwatch because the anniversary stuff is happening right now. Yes. Yeah. What about you, Tiff? About the same. For Hogwarts Mystery, I've actually been able to resume playing not as much as I wanted to but gotten further up I did notice that they finally had added year 4 so year 4 is available and there's so much shit to do and I can't wait to actually like play that but I got to like a good part storyline where it just seems like no matter who you bring down to the cursed vault like somebody you care about is gonna get injured so it's just like just beware <laughs> just stay away but still like I wanna find out what happened and why is this thing here and Voldemort oh no we're not in that era sorry but they'll see the mystery involved even though I've only moved it up a notch it's still not enough a lot of it's just trying to get your skills up and stuff. So it'll be fine. And Destiny 2 just been playing the story mode and I have finally started my Titan but my Titan is like still bleeding and battered at the beginning so I can't wait to get every bit of my character classes up to par as they should be. So well, eventually we get there. Alright, cool. So in other news, Sony is kind of putting the feelers out there letting people know that the PS4 their life cycle is starting to wind down over the next couple of years and so they're gearing up for the PS5. It's kind kind of a bittersweet thing because I felt like the PS4 has been such a great console generation for Sony. Like, yes. they have been selling so well. This is their best since, like, PlayStation 2. Two. Because PS3 kind of had, like, a really rough beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. It worked out toward the end, but yeah. especially that beginning kind of hurt them. But I think with the Xbox One not really selling as well. Yeah. And, yeah, Nintendo has always had their own little niche market. Yeah. Sony's just kicking ass and taking names, but I, I think they're looking at within the next three years right. that's when it'll slow down the life cycle so and it seems like they were already dropping a couple months ago about the possibility of what the design would be for the playstation 5 but of course we won't probably see that finalized until maybe we get like another year or two into the ending cycle of ps4 but we'll see mm-hmm. when that comes down the pike yeah so it'll probably be really sometime 2021 20, yeah maybe but it'll be interesting to see what they do and how they evolve from there especially with them phasing out the PS3 and Mm -hmm. Vita games, so I think Persona 5 has been one of the largest last PS3 Mm -hmm. games that was released, which is kind of shocking, and so we're heading into greener pastures, but yeah. One can hope, without being screwed over, that's what (laughs) I want to know, if there'll be a possibility, but you know, everybody wants their money, and they will find different ways to gouge you for it. Mm -hmm. So, alright. And then, uh, other news, Overwatch, their two-year anniversary is here, like, the babies grow up, and they save China. It's just weird that it's been two years, and and it's it's strange because I feel like Overwatch has been around longer. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> given the amount of you know gameplay and the lore and the I don't know all the events and matches and stuff going on, it's just like it's only been two years, mm-hmm. but it feels like a lifetime of adventures, and I can't wait. I, I haven't played wait. anything yet. Me but. either. <sighs> but that that Symmetra skin though, oh is my god, so freaking. <laughs> adorable. I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. And someone had done the top five skins from like best to worst and Symmetra of course was at the top. But Torbjorn was like a skin that you already had before. Oh. It, it seemed like that. But it's, it's a pretty kind of blue but at the same time it's kind of like forgettable. Like I've had like my accumulation of all my doubles I've gotten. Uh, so I've saved my money for this event. So oh. I'm getting my shit. 
Yeah, and I want to play the new map, Petra. I was like, this is so cool. I have not been able to play Overwatch in a minute, mm -hmm. so I cannot wait to jump back in and buff some skulls. Oh, hell yeah. But Sims 4? Oh my oh, god! god. Uh oh. Ah! Okay, so they're finally releasing <laughs> Sims 4 Seasons, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but the simming community has been asking for Seasons from the beginning. Which like, is a staple in Sims. It's become a staple, and it's always been the, one of the most popular expansions every generation. So they're just like, why the fuck was this not the one of the first ones you rolled out? And I've been following Grant Rodiak on Twitter. He's created his own page and answering questions and stuff, and he's like, we wanted to provide the gameplay that gamers want but still refine it in a way that it's not been done before and so I really do appreciate that they are kind of listening to their audience it's not just like fuck all y'all we're gonna do what we want right but at the same time we're heading near the end of sims 4's cycle and it's just kind of strange that we're just now getting seasoned right. so yeah they've been hinting at other different packs that they're doing but this will be released i think over the next couple of months pets and seasons those are the more consistent ones that communities like you have to have this right right so i haven't watched the gameplay trailer because i don't want to spoil myself right or set up myself for expectations that are not, that there. Are not met yeah so we'll see what happens but yay, yay, we're getting seasons. Even though, like, usually seasons or seasonal expansion packs are usually like the mid generation deal at least, but it's weird that's given to at the tail end. I'm like, that's usually an earlier mm -hmm. staple, so I don't No one knows what EA is thinking anymore. Yeah, but I think one of the things about seasons, at least the last generations, it really expanded gameplay a lot and mm -hmm. the way that you interact with the other simmers because you know, you have Christmas and holidays, right. they have the spring festivals and stuff like like that with Sims 3, but it was a nice opportunity for your Sims to uh, do holiday themed events and, and become closer together and mm -hmm. oh yeah, let's do a snowball fight, let's have a water balloon fight, and it's just like, oh, these are so sweet, so. In other news, we are down here in Houston for Comic Palooza. Whoop, whoop. So, I guess, what are your first impressions? Because we were able to just do only a Friday, yeah. Friday attendance. So, of course, like right now, I'm sure the craziness of Saturday is going to in full effect. So, we couldn't gauge fully what all Comic Palooza is. But what were your impressions on Friday, Mia? I liked it. We we had a little bit of a hiccup, but the staff was very nice and very mm -hmm. helpful. We had a panel on Friday, mm -hmm. so we were able to go run around, look at everything, meet friends. We actually ran into old friends we've mm -hmm. seen at other cons. So, it was kind of nice to catch up. We ran into Martha Marie and some of her friends mm -hmm. at Kira Kira Entertainment and hung out with their room for a little bit. We saw a concert. It was really nice. Yeah, um, J-pop concert. Yeah, yeah. but I, I regularly liked, for the most part, I liked the layout of it. They had a full console gaming section. They mm -hmm. had a full room, a ballroom, just for tabletop gaming. It was so cool. It was massive. <laughs> it was wonderful. I'm like, man, can let's play, have can't this song. Can't down there. Yeah. yeah. It was great that they had a little bit of, of something for everybody. We went into the vendor room once and I can guarantee you it's the size of at least two to three football fields. It Easily. was long. It was the entire expanse of the convention center. Yeah. Wall to wall vendors. Yeah. It was nuts. They did a lot more space in between the vendor booths to give it a little more room so I can only guesstimate how much traffic they'll be following through there today. Mm -hmm. So we did not want to go tempted to anything. We just went and saw a vendor friend of ours but we're just like yeah we're not in that temptation to go and <laughs> run around because we don't need any more things people. Right now. So, not right now. Not right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so we decided after we're done with this we're going to go video game window shopping because there's a ton of video game stores in the Houston area and this is our first time being down here for a con. Right. So we're going to go exploring and see what we can find. Well, of course, like, we're unbiased and we have never been here on the full weekend so we can't really say for standards but it looks like they're starting to slowly get their stuff together because I know there's been a lot of issues of what Kamapalooza has been able to do to get everything organized but so it looks like they're doing that right but of course that was Friday but there was still a lot of people there for Friday. Yeah. Um. So I can only imagine how Saturday is gonna come up and apparently found out that Janice Davis has actually just got here last <laughs> night. We just happened to miss her, but we gave her our best of luck. But it was wonderful, and there's lots of panels, there's lots of different things. There's a whole block just for writing and literary stuff. Yes. If you are sci-fi, NASA was actually was there. there. Got a picture. Yeah, it was really cool. They had some simulations of things that they do. They have family room for the kids, mm -hmm. like so the kids can be a part. I'm like, there's something for everything. They have the Houston Outlaws for the Overwatch League set up for people to do competitive play 
play that way too. Mm -hmm. We didn't really get to go to any celebrity Q and A's, unfortunately. But you know, maybe that's something we can probably do next time. Mm -hmm. So we had a panel and it was almost full. I was yes. really shocked. I was like, oh my really gosh, look at these people! And it's like, yo, understand? They so get it. Yeah. If, if you guys are now the people who attended the panel who are now listening to us, thank you so much for number one coming to our panel and, and also just checking us out. We greatly appreciate that more than you know. Yeah, y'all were an amazing audience and we had a great time. We fangirled a lot. We got off topic a lot, but it was good. Um, good off topic. Yeah, so. just sharing off topic. just experiences dealing with adulting and gaming and all the struggles that come along with that. And it's just like, wow, there are other people that deal with the same thing we do. Yes. And yeah, it was kind of nice. <laughs> all of my gaming regret feels sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely like a, a good thumbs up for that because I really did enjoy it. Once we got all the kinks of the morning worked out, like it really became in a very enjoyable day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was worth it. Worth the trip down here. Yeah, it was definitely worth it. So we definitely want to come back next year and yeah, hopefully do the whole three-day event. I'm interested to see what Saturday looks like. Right. But yeah, that was just, just so much fun. So wow. much fun. Ah, but such fun. Such fun. <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot of stuff to get to. So tip, are you ready to level up? The rhythm's gonna get you. Woo! Let's level up! So for today's tandem topic, tea time, let's talk about this rhythm that's going to get us. We are going to discuss rhythm games today. To and it's more like in the dance aspect, not necessarily like guitar hero. There is a distinction. There is a two. distinction. And I feel like music games specifically need their own episode because right. we can talk all day about those. A so. lot. But yeah. it's kind of neat to see that there was a splice in the genre because, you know, you do realize that, yes, musical games are intricate, but they're two they're separate entities of that. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to get into the dancing, the physical dancing aspect of the rhythm games. So well, it's time to get physical. Woo -woo. Let's get physical. Physical. And we're going to be saying this ad nauseum, y'all, so you know, yeah. bear with. Sorry. Bear with. <laughs> we're going to probably be singing a lot. I'm just cueing y'all in. So, actually, y'all know what this is. Yeah. You know what you signed up for. <laughs> That's all of it. But, essentially, video rhythm games have been steadily been on the rise since the early 80s. Like, I didn't realize that because it seemed like it didn't come into my consciousness, at least until the early 2000-ish to now, especially with the home consoles with the Kinect and the Move and stuff like that. It didn't really come into my mind until then. But, apparently, it's been on for a long time. And they call this genre kind of like extra gaming, a source. That's just one of the names. Dancing games just seem better to me. It just seems less complicated. Yes. Exer Gaming, and that's quote unquote, there was a way to not only make gaming a little fun, but also to make it a little bit more physical because, you know, video gaming in general is a very sit down and not really like a very physical activity at all. So it's just another way to make it fun and to get people off their feet and actually do something fun and dancing because dancing can be fun for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And Bandai, they released the Power Pad, rose up first in Japan in 1986. And then, of course, they were acquired by Nintendo for North America. America, and then they released it in 1987. And they even had a game called Dance Aerobics that was back in the day that utilizes the power pad before the power pad just became a rug for everybody. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had games like that already starting out in the 80s itself. But it seemed like this lead to the footwork, <laughs> pun intended, <laughs> to the phenomenal that turned into be Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, and that came from Konami, which had this started to drop into arcades since about 1998. And so it seemed like you were just doing the Konami code, but just in rhythm. Like, down, down, up. It's <laughs> like, can't get it. The aim of the game is that the players were on this type of platform, and you had color arrows that were just in the form of a cross. And it seemed like they were to step on arrows that were as known as the, the step zone in rhythm to what they see on the screen to correlate with what they were stepping on in rhythm. You are rated on how accurate your steps are to the rhythm or to the beat. And the ratings can range from best to worst. It's marvelous, imperfect, great, good, almost, and mixed. And a lot of this goes towards a dance gauge. If you get really good scores, which are your top four, it'll fill up the music gauge, but your almost and misses will totally just drain the gauge until if you completely suck, then it'll just completely just stop the entire song and you fail it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, they, they don't kid. Like, there is no redemption from that. It's like, if you fail, you fail, get off the stage. 
<laughs> you embarrass me. You embarrass me. <laughs> Mother Russia plays you. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, of course, there are also arrows that uh, force you to freeze or shock arrows that were in the later remixes of the games. Freeze arrows were the long green arrows. You have to hold down the arrow. You have to get the okay and then you're good. But if you miss those, those are ones that will mess you up big time. For sure, it really does. And then the shock arrows you have to avoid. And so it's just trying to get those arrows going at the same, same time. same time and try to like <laughs> get your score to be consistent. Those are like little enemy wedges or something to throw in to make the games a little bit more fresher in the later releases. Mm. There's also a single player and there's also a two player which you have a versus mode or if you're crazy enough you can do doubles which is pretty much single player that has all eight of the arrows at their disposal. I'm like I would die. Yeah. I died with just doing <laughs> the four and that was when we were on the cruise and it wasn't Dance Dance but it was like a off brand of Dance Dance and that was enough. <laughs> and then there are other co-op modes like there's a the couple unison mode which is also known as like tag. There's chorus mode which is a list of a bunch of consecutive songs or battle mode kind of like a tug of war where you send other elements to put the other player off their game. So mm-hmm. it's like trying to sabotage them yes. essentially and mess them up so they can fail and you're the victor. You're the victor. Um, right. Sabotage. <laughs> <don't> know, right? <laughs> um, but Dance Dance Revolution has about three to five roughly different difficulty modes that range from like easy, basic, standard, manic, and then extra, which, yeah. I'll I'm, be manically woo. extra on all of those modes. Oh That's gosh. the thing. The only extra you're going to see me doing is wiping the fuck out. That's I know, right? Just like, oh Lord, I am slain. <laughs> I have fallen and I failed. What shall I do? That would just pretty much be me just laying like prostrate on all of the arrows just like I I give up Jesus I give up it's like it's not okay we're not freezing anymore not freezing. get off the damn it Get off my get damn off. pad right now. Yeah. Get off my pad. Um, <laughs> but pretty much DDR kind of set the precedent of what dancing games would eventually evolve into. And they also off-brand games, but they were games that came after that that kind of mimicked what Dance Dance Revolution was trying to do. In 1999, Endemiros had done a Pump It Up edition of that. And there's also In the Groove by Rockstar, which eventually got sued by Konami. So Konami bought out that particular series. I remember when, what was it, Pump it up extreme was released. I think Shit. that X-Play did a, a review on that a long time ago, but... I oh, think, that's funny. Yeah, I was like, wow, that's... Whew, yeah. It gives you all kinds of feels. Mm-hmm. But yeah, eventually we will see a lot more games developed for home consoles and then especially with the rise of the Wii changed the game for yeah. everybody. But yes. It also extended into the Kinect and then the PS Move with yeah. the iToy and all that stuff. So, rhythm games, even though they've been around for a minute, it's really when the Wii came on the scene that really changed the game especially and for consoles and that they were like we have to step up our game so mm-hmm. that's the whole reason why we have it seemed like the second dawning of oh, home console God. games that was reflecting around these dance rhythm games so we got stuff like just dance just dance it'll, it'll be, be okay, okay. Da, 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 just dance spin that record thing da, 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 da. <laughs> Wait, we'll just keep on going like can't help it just put you in a dancing mood right <laughs> but yeah the first just dance game released in 2009 by you Ubisoft mm-hmm. or Ubisoft. I'm sorry, guys. I keep mispronouncing. But like if people still say both ways, so like yeah. whichever you feel. Yeah. Ubisoft released the game for the Wii originally, and so it featured up to four-player competitive and cooperative play. And there are several modes that they started off with. Probably the most common ones were like the battle modes, and you have to freeze and all that. But we'll get into that later. Mm-hmm. But this first originated actually as a mini game for the Raymond Rabbit series. Oh, yes, the Raymond Raven. Rabbit series, the Ubisoft version of Minions before Minions were a thing, but it actually developed into a full blown game on its own because that blows they, my fucking mind. Yeah, the developers at the time they realized that the Wii motion controller could be very well used for rhythm and motion and right, music games, right? And, and so that's where it sort of develops. Like, oh, we could use this for music and dancing. So the majority of the rhythm games that you're, we're going to talk about are actually developed from Ubisoft's catalog, yeah. mainly because they saw the capabilities of the Wii especially early on and decided to just embrace it full fold so right. which is pretty neat but it's motion control dance moves so you actually have to do mimicry so you have to mimic what you see on the screen exactly right. to earn points special moves you have to actually strike a pose and then it gives you either like gold points or stars and it increases your overall rank and those rankings can it, 
try to be nicer to you. Right, <laughs> it's right. harder to fail a Just Dance game, but they have the different rankings, and depending on how much you earn, you unlock bonus content as well. Sweet. And so, and so they do have various versions of the same songs where they do mashups. It's pretty cool. But their catalog usually ranges from like pop, especially teen pop, top 40. You'll mm-hmm. see a lot of Rihanna, Katy Perry, Britney Spears, whoever's popular at the time, you're going to see them. But they also include a lot of electronic rock hip-hop, R&B, and then the later games especially are starting to emphasize more J-pop, like Hatsune Miku, you see a lot of her stuff now, and then K-pop with Psy, Hyuna, and a couple others, and it's always my hope they develop a full K-pop mm-hmm. one, but yeah, we're getting there. So. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> slowly yeah. surely, because you keep asking them on the reg yes. on Twitter, it's like, um, so that K-pop though, yes. is outside of Psy, like we need more, there's more, especially now that they're starting to get bigger over here. BTS and, and X so, and a couple other groups have really blown up, especially in the last couple of years. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think Ubisoft will do it. It's just a matter of when and figuring out who to include and all that. And Everybody. Yeah, and there's probably international licensing issues they have to deal with because South Korea and all that. So, yeah, hopefully that will come down the pipeline mm-hmm. somewhere. But ever since 2009, they've been releasing games every year. Mm-hmm. So, kind of like with the Far Cries and Assassin's Creed. Yeah. There, they're just like, all right, we're going to capitalize on this shit. Just um, juggle. Like yeah. everything. But so. the, the cool thing is that they've expanded across all platforms now, even including smartphones. You don't even have to have the game. They have companion apps that cool. work with the game. And then newer games have added different modes depending on which game and which platform you're playing on. The most popular one, workout mode, which is called Just Sweat. You can do... Shoot, I do that just turning <laughs> on the damn game. Right? What are you talking about? <laughs> just Sweat. But it's cool because they have modes that range from, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, right. 60. And so you can actually tailor-made your own your, list your of what list. you want to do. And they actually have it by style. So if you want to do more Latin style or you want more of a a punk rock, they try to match up your playlist and activity and they actually gauge your activity levels and will suggest future songs based on that. So if they notice that you're feeling tired, they'll give you one or two slow songs to kind of calm you down before they pump things back up. Sweet. It's really cool. They have the dance battle modes and those can range from, you know, straight up mimicry where you have to stand still for a certain period of time or dance quest. As a player, you battle against the AI with three randomly selected songs mm-hmm. and the special moves help count toward your overall score. Showtime, you can r- record lip synced videos. It's very short, cool. but this is stuff that you can send to other friends and stuff. They've hey. included a lot with social media. But yeah, on stage, this is a newer one that I've not seen yet, but I think it's in Just Dance 2017 or 18. One person serves as like the lead dancer and then the other ones are the backup dancers. And so, oh, so it's like Beyonce and then Kelly and Michelle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of like that. But it's really cool so if you ever want to channel your inner girl group or, or boy bander you can just put that on and just... I mean that seems like all kinds of single ladies I, so that's fine. Yeah, I want to do that. That sounds fun actually. Mm-hmm. But later games have released actual kids modes so they have modes designed for younger players that it simplifies the choreography it's easier to get certain scores because depending on which platform you're using the Kinect or the Wii or there's some criticism regarding some of the moves and getting them exactly right so yeah that's been a a recurring thing happening with them and then the last couple of games like Just Dance 2017 2018 they've actually included subscription based services and it includes back catalogs of songs from previous games so if you weren't able to play the original Just Dance for the Wii they have some of those songs on there and you can dance to those and it also features other exclusive content, which is nice. It's actually called Just Dance Unlimited. Mm-hmm. And I think Just Dance 2018 includes a free three-month subscription of the service. So you can kind of test it out, see if you like it. And cool. then if it's great, then you can Keep continue. But yeah, Just Dance is blown up. Yeah. <laughs> to a yeah. new beast. So I guess, Tiff, you want to talk about some of these? Because there's quite a lot. Yeah, there's quite a bit of spinoff series that they've had since conception. You have the Experience series, which is Michael Jackson's The Experience which we'll get into in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the Black Eyed Peas experience and hip hop experience. And also they have Dance on Broadway, which I completely really want to try that. Show. I know, right? Ava and Smurfs Dance Party, which I don't, I still want to ask why that was even considered. I, I blame the movie. I think they had a stake in the movie somehow, and that's where it kind of originated from. Could you imagine, like, if Alvin and the Chipmunks ain't got one, why does the Smurfs have one? 
And even then, Alvin and Chipmunks don't deserve it. Look, I'm just glad they don't have a Minions dance party. So Don't, uh, don't you say that into existence. I'm sorry. I'm, take it back. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, mm, yeah. But Just Dance kind of was the grandfather of a lot of these other games. Yes. And spinoffs. And there's a ton of other franchises we'll talk about. Like, for example... Dance Central. Because we're party rocking in the house tonight. Hey! da 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 bum 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 no. But uh, Dance Central is more of what I play. I have not really played any of the Just Dances, even though it's not like I don't want to. It's just that, like, let me beat these games and then I'll branch off and do other stuff. Mm-hmm. But Dance Central was essentially released in 2010 by Harmonix, which was the same makers of Guitar Hero and Rock Band. So this is kind of like their own way of getting into the dance groove of everything out- <laughs> outside of... <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm musically punny today. Outside of the music rhythm games that we had before, after that market had burst. This is more of a Xbox release for the Kinect, unfortunately. And there's been about four releases of this particular series. The one that was kind of like set apart was the last one, which was Dance Central. I think it was released like three or four years ago. But it was digitally released only through the Xbox store so that they can issue new songs. And that was still hot on the charts at the time. So you consistently would get new updates songs and dances. Hmm. There are three levels of difficulty per song. So you perform the dance moves and that you appear on the screen as an avatar. And this is an avatar that's selected out of like a variety of different dancers. And it gets more the further you get along in the series. You have more, more avatars to choose from. Their body is generally outlined with like white unless your limb is not where it should be. Then it's red and then it's practically like where you don't get enough points to cover that as a perfect move. The scoring system has about four levels on it indicating in the circle around your avatar's feet. If you move well within that, the colors will change. Red is the smallest thing, but it'll get bigger until you do the most perfect move. You have your white or diamond status, which is your flawless. Flawless. Uh, and so the goal is to keep the upper two scores, you know, in order for you to fill up this boom box of five stars. So if you fill up the boom box of stars, then that means you pretty much have perfected the level by the end of the song. But luckily, you don't have to do that until fail. Like if you just fail everything, they'll just let you know, well, you almost did well so <laughs> there's a variety of different modes for this game too you can just perform the dances all the way through you can also break down the song to get the dance moves a little bit right and if you can't even do that in dance mode you can also break it down even slower than that to get it really down there is a variety of workout modes they have different minutes that you can do and they also do the suggestion in case you've run a little bit longer like you feel tired just go and sit down for a minute there is also dance battle between friends you can also do challenge mode where you can get like a handful of songs to at least four stars or better and there's also dance crews that you have to get like a whole list of songs to get I think 16 stars in order to unlock the hard song for you to graduate to mm-hmm. in order for you to rep their crew and if you manage to like complete I can think most of them you can unlock their street outfits to rep their crew so that's pretty cool until you get to like the hard boss which you face off with like I think a variety of like five different songs that you have to get four or better on and you compete against this dude that's controlling two robots that's your enemy boss and that's at least in Dance Central 2. Too. That's cool that uh-huh. they included a story. I've uh-huh. never heard, like, I'm gonna play that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Dance Central 3 is the one that really has a story with Dr. Tan. I tried, started doing that by that time. I was like, I can't keep up with any of this shit. You have the avatars or the dancers go back into time, and so it starts at the 70s, where you have 70s central songs, and you have to kind of like do the same thing for Dance Crew. You have to get, like, a certain amount of stars and better, and then you have a heart song to unlock in order for you to pass to the next decade. And then after that, I passed into the age, I think, most like doing the Humpty dance oh. and I was just like I am so tired right now <laughs> I'm going to sit my Humpty Dumpty ass back down but yeah that's kind of cool that it includes the story mode so you can get back to modern times I thought that was pretty cool I've played co-op mode with my husband bless his heart because he can't dance he tries but like it's also great for just co-op too and to see if you can beat them that generally I always do so maybe I just need me to come over so we can yeah so let's, we can do just dance. It, let's do da, 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 it let's do it hey hey uh, 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 no, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, one of the great things about dance games is because of that social, that co-op aspect, and mm-hmm. you get to hang out. And, and so it's one of those great games that if you need a way to introduce people into gaming casually, even, mm-hmm. yeah, these are wonderful ways great to do way that. Great way to do that. But the next one on our list is actually an offshoot from Just Dance, one of the originals. So this is Michael Jackson, The Experience. Yes. It's the night upon night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so this was released sometime in 2010 slash 2011 by Ubisoft, of course, and this game 
had the accumulation of some of Michael Jackson's biggest hits and it kind of had the same concepts as the Just Dance series. They are three modes. Classic one where you follow along to Michael Jackson and you get to feel like a badass for a little mm-hmm. bit. A duo which is for performances and it features duets or videos that have two main characters so you can choose either dancing as Michael mm-hmm. or of the other character of the video and it changes depending on which song you're doing. So if you're doing Thriller I think the other person is a mummy. If you're doing Remember the Time one of the backup dancers from there or something like that. Uh, it changes with each video. Right. Bad. Or the way you make you make me feel. I think you like the girl or, mm-hmm. or Michael or something like that. Yeah and so it tries to emulate Michael Jackson's moves as they were when they released a Bless music video. Him. Um, his- but yeah the crew as a whole is with Michael and you have like two backup dancers or five depending on the song and then unlocking three will open up the dance school which will actually showcase the more advanced moves that Michael Jackson does and so if you are really on point with your stuff you can do it big. And they try to make everything as close to what he had done on his videos or or whatever. They did some really painstaking research and it shows especially when you do remember the time I was like yeah get this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go ahead Michael. He he into the wind Um, (laughs) but yeah uh, it features a full four player mode which is also available. Unfortunately it's only on the Wii and the PS3 version for the consoles. All four can like sing and dance Mm -hmm. and stuff like that at the same time. The Connect is one person It's one person at a time. Like you can still have a four player mode but it's not gonna four people can't be up there. It's more like each person has to take a turn. Mm -hmm. And then the handheld, the DS versions follow along kind of like the same route as Elite Beat Agents. If you Mm -hmm. played that you have to actually tap your stylus in time with certain beats that are going on in Mm -hmm. the music and it's very complicated so I haven't played that version but I would like to try. I know you're just like and now I'm on the hunt. I love Elite Beat Agents. It's one of my favorite games so <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's great. The Connect version actually has player projection, and that way it puts the player's image into the game. So that it's that like was so I can cool. be with Michael. Yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, features in this mode with player projection, you can do it solo or parties between two and four people. In party mode, there's an option for co-op. So with co-op, you can tag team to actually complete a song. Battle, you can a song is broken down, and then one side dances, the other side sings. Ah. Which is nice that they included a little bit of both so mm-hmm. if you wanted to really like Sing get it. your karaoke on it's it's a nice way of getting that done oh definitely even though half the time i still don't know what the fuck michael was doing about <laughs> <laughs> Chamon. Chamon. I'm like, what? Like, what? what the hell okay. is Chum? Okay. okay. There's a chum no, bucket. Who are you calling a chum? <laughs> right? um, but in the party modes, there's three different modes where you can dance, you can do performance, and then master performance. And then a lot of these modes you can will switch out, like, you know, dance only, singing only, or both singing and dancing elements. Mm-hmm. So you need to actually activate the King of Power mode, which will be a crown above the player's head, and it will multiply your score times eight. So that that means you were you were in your, your zone your element like you've so. been following michael since like diapers you yes know, basically yeah um and so you can get a grade of a perfect good okay almost and miss the we and the ps3 they had versions where you can take pictures and upload to your social media and stuff like that honestly i felt like the michael jackson experience was harder than just dance oh no doubt yeah because michael and his moves and like you really had to work with because uh, i use a ps3 version you really had to work that thing to get it exactly right. I'm like, how did he do did the that? thing? I see that I'm doing it, but you know, my hand's not where it needs to be and stuff. So it, it's it's a doozy, but it's worth it. Right. If you are a fan of Michael Jackson, I definitely recommend this game. Um, I probably need to find the Kinect version. I think I will really yeah. enjoy it. Unless I, I can't remember if I have it or not. Hmm. I can double check. But definitely play it. It's worth it. It's worth your time and energy and yeah, there are other games out there like Zumba. I've played that one, and so if you need a good workout, <laughs> they feature some really excellent music. Unfortunately, this one didn't really get as much hype as the other ones, but right. you practice different dance moves, and you're doing a full Zumba workout. There's easy, medium, hard modes. It's not very complicated. If you would like to get your workout on, enjoy something fun, rhythm games trick you into yes. you know exercising because yes. you're actually having fun, but dancing is hard work. But yeah, there are other games out there, but a lot of them are either offshoots of either DDR, Just Dance, Dance Central, or other ones. So if you have other dance or rhythm games that you really enjoy, let us know. You know mm-hmm. where our socials are, all that stuff. Hit them up. Yeah, and mm. we'd love to hear your thoughts on stuff that you've played. So, all right. Tiff, 
Are you ready for this wheel of random tandem? Let's spin the wheel cause we know how it feels. Hey. dancing our asses off we're gonna be so tired i know today. right <laughs> so have yet to go on to this houston sun oh shit oh my god the humidity the humidity's oh. killed my hair oh. <laughs> but for today's wheel of random tandem let's discuss tiffany what rhythm game would you like to experience that you have not yet it's not really anything that's been released but something i would like to see just a variation of it the salsa game to actually dance the salsa or the mambo or something of latin dances or any Kind of world dance like an international focus. yes oh, that would be, cool. be so cool because you know each culture has their different kinds of rhythms and stuff like that especially see something from africa mm -hmm. or for or from south <laughs> america a lot of them they can get it i would love to experience something as cultured as that that'd be cool mm -hmm. i think probably the closest thing you might get would be the zumba yeah yeah and just dance has included a lot more international stuff that's just kind of like out there and she's like this is kind of weird but i'm digging it digging. cool i can show her touch all day right. yeah. <laughs> but i'm like k-pop though get the k-pop yeah oh yeah that's cool though i like that so maybe eventually we might get that i don't know if harmonics will do it because i know they've been having problems but that's an episode we would like to do sometime in the future but you never know what the future may hold so what do you think i wish i I would have experienced DDR when it was like in its heyday. Yeah. When I was in college, that's when DDR was at its peak. Mm -hmm. And at my student union, we had a DDR cabinet. You would see people all day long with buckets right. of quarters just going at it. And they'd just be dripping with sweat. I think every week they did challenges and stuff like that. And people would get together. And so I wish I would have played back then because number one, I was a lot skinnier and could like <laughs> handle it because my college had a lot of hills and stairs. So I'd be like, I am prepped for the dance. That's probably why you're just like, no, I'm too tired. It took me a while to get up to the hill. <laughs> talking about. Yeah, you know you're at a real college for sure when you lose 15 pounds your freshman year. And not year. gain the 15. Yeah, you don't, there's no such thing as freshman 15 there. But yeah, it was popular at the time and it would have been a great way for me to make fellow nerd friends and mm -hmm. to stay active and we stuff like that. We didn't know that now. Yeah, and I think especially when things are happening at the time and it's just like, you know that DDR exists. We had, I want to say about 10 years ago, my mom bought one of the little DDR type pads for the Wii and there was a DDR console game that we played for the Wii, but it wasn't really the same. It was just like, okay, this is all right, but I don't really feel it. The intensity that you would get being in an actual cabinet right, and doing right. a thing. Because it was magic watching those people I'm like god bless you guys that's the thing about that video about that one dude that was chubby and stuff but his footwork was incredible doing the typewriter dance from mc hammered like times 12 that was incredible yeah and the precision to get that and i was always worried that i would slip and fall mm. because especially because of how glossy it was and then you have people sweating on there and i would die exactly <laughs> it's too far apart from me it's not made for short people so yeah that's what i would have liked to experience so. awesome yeah so I guess, do you have any final thoughts? Um, well, you know, guys, as always, we have our socials at Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Tumblr. We are also accessible through our email, tandemcanon at gmail.com. So if you have stuff you'd like to discuss, fan, girl, boy, them, about, or you have suggestions for future episodes, please hit us up. We would love to make additional friends. So yeah, we're here. Tiff, do we have any new followers for this week? We do. It's Lady Sly. Woo! Subaki and I am Jeff Emerson. Mm -hmm. They're all from Twitter. Thank you guys for following us because you guys are amazing. I think for commenters, we didn't really get a lot of special stuff going on this week because we've been busy <laughs> yeah. preparing for Comic Palooza, but we've been talking back and forth with Janice. So hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. Sorry we missed you, but and then as for special shout outs, oh my gosh, thank you, Comic Palooza, mm -hmm. for working with us and allowing us to do a panel for you guys. And we appreciate your staff and how much y'all helped us. Us. and I know it was a little bit iffy kind of starting off but then we got into the groove of things and all was right with the world so we would like to come back next year if it Definitely. fits our calendars and everything and then of course our fellow panelist peeps just being awesome we attended some really cool panels about video game nerd core music the influences of that mm -hmm. what draws their experiences when they're doing because it was a variety of different people who had either done hip-hop or blues mm -hmm. and jazz and how they incorporate nerdum into that 
music how and how silly nerdcore has become a thing when like a lot of them are just like I gotta be up in high school for this. so special shout out of course to Martha Marie for just being an awesome thing we appreciate the concert they did so well her and Sarah and so thank you ladies for your hospitality and friendship so they did a concert series that focused on retro J-pop and different dances they talked about idol culture mm-hmm. in Japan and how different things within that culture like chants and colors and whatnot and it was just kind of cool it's like oh I did not expect all this so mm-hmm. it was fun it was educational and it was very adorable I'm like I want to do that yeah, that's, that's so cute thing. it's like what, what's the next concert <laughs> right I'll <Got> meet in <laughs> so Tiff who is your PYT for this week I chose Riff Raff DC and he has done most of the dance central I think mostly number two he will just show him competing with his friend sometimes called Youth and Asian because he's an Asian guy and so he has like a shirt from this one character on Dance Central called Glitch he looks just like him and of course he chooses that character too doesn't help but just seeing them dance off or seeing Riff Raff dance by himself if you ever want to get like an idea of what these dances look like you know check out their channel because home will be getting it rally back and especially to see them battle it out so that's pretty neat mm-hmm. what about you? I chose Killian Experience he is a video game YouTuber but he does garbage reviews uh-huh. of video games so it's like deadpan stuff about video games and kind of the evolution of certain games. Sounds like my kind of dude. Yeah, (laughs) but it's from a very smart ass perspective. Like, I like the ones that he did over the Harry Potter games. Yeah, and so he'll go over different series and franchises and stuff, and I love his videos. They're funny. They're very informational, but they're very sarcastic, witty humor, and I'm like, yes, I am here for this. Mm So, yeah, definitely check him out. He's awesome, especially if you need more humor in your life. He's a great person to talk. Always. I can always use more humor. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not the humor. It's not the humor. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the same place. This is why we're best friends. I know, guys. right? And sink and sink. I'm not saying sing anything in sync wise because you know J- Justin might be on the prowl. So he needs money. I know, right? Um, but Hand out. Uh, <laughs> as for events, oh. so our next one coming up is ArlingCon June 30th at Arling Te- Arlington, Texas. Arlington, Texas. <laughs> no, it's not King of the Hill. We're not going there. But yeah, Arlington, Texas at, at it was it UT. UTA, it's right? UTA at yeah. the UC. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a panel there, and it's going to be a very fun event. A couple mm-hmm. of our conference will be there, so mm-hmm. if you're in the area, stop by, check them out, check us out, mm-hmm. and yeah, have a good time. The next one, Let's Play Gaming Expo in Irving, Texas, July 27th through the 29th. So this is going to be a three-day event, and we're super yeah, excited. so lit. Got my day's requested mm-hmm. already. Yeah, because so excited. Yeah, they're going to feature retro games, contests, Plays and console areas. Mm. And can't wait. It's growing up so much. I know. <sighs> baby. And then Infinicon August 3rd through the 5th in Addison, Texas. This is an offshoot of AllCon. It's kind of like the younger sister but you definitely want to check it out if you can. QuakeCon August 9th through the 12th in mm. Grapevine, Texas. This is free if you are just going for just the sake of going but if you're doing bring your own computer I think it's $75. Yeah they just upped it up because I think they're going to be able to do more so you know have mm-hmm. to pay for that electricity. Yeah but it's worth it. Definitely go and hopefully registration should be soon normally it's up by now but I think they're tweaking something so and then last but not least we have Wizard World Austin September 21st through the 23rd in Austin Texas we are hoping to do a panel we're we're not sure just yet but we'll give you guys some updates as we get closer to the date and we'll be adding 